You're listening to the Redneck Hockey Podcast, the official gatekeepers of the Trip Tracy Fan Club and the only Carolina Hurricane show fueled solely on barbecue, bowberry biscuits, and storm brew. As always, I'm your host, Griffin Daughtry, and I'm joined by my fellow Caniac co-hosts, Connor Weeks and Alex Pace. This week, we talk about the Canes clinching the playoffs, answer questions from some of our listeners, and discuss how the league needs to embrace Bitcoin. If this is your first time listening, please consider subscribing to the show and following us on Twitter and Instagram. Without further delay, let's do that hockey. Fifteen minutes ago, I told Griffin I couldn't feel my thumb still. Oh my god! So yeah, I guess I guess I'll just open with with the story. So, I uh, I went and got a haircut this morning, and uh, God decided that that wasn't the only thing that was getting cut today. So, I. Uh, you know, I wanted to get some light in my apartment and I opened the, the blinds and they fell off and hit me in the head. And I have like 10 foot ceilings and like really wide windows. So you, they're like heavy blinds, like heavy metal blinds they hit me in the head. And I was like, man, that that's not cool. I'm just going to just going to try to put these back up there as best I can. I, I put them back up there and they were still about halfway open. So I put them back up. And I tried to open them all the way. And when I did it that time, it fell off again. And I tried to catch them. And like this metal piece on the bottom of them just sliced right through my hand, like, you know, a hot knife through butter. And uh, yeah, next thing I know, I'm on the way to the fine folks over at Duke Emergency Room. And all I could think about was, man, I'm about to get traded for, you know, need a writer. <laughs> the hurricane's injury list grows. <laughs> You're a regular Victor Rask, let me tell you. Yeah, now I understand why Victor Rask was out for so long. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to like play video games or do much of anything. For Cook your own meals. Yeah. What did uh, Lily say about everything? Uh, she was pretty good about it, actually. Like, um, she she stayed calm. She kept me calm. I only needed three stitches, so it wasn't like as bad as I, I thought initially. Um, but when it first happened, and I could like see the ligaments in my hand, I was like, yeah. oh. This is definitely emergency room. No one could believe me either. It's like, who, who would think that your blinds would slice your hands open, you know? <laughs> so I guess as the kids like to say, my blinds woke up and decided to choose violence this morning. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. And you're still here. Great podcast. We're dedicated. Warrior. That's like a McGinn level dedication. Upper body injury. Still still in the lineup for the podcast. <laughs> So, uh, would ESPN have me as day to day? I don't even want to talk about ESPN and their day to day nonsense anymore. I've emailed or I've tweeted at them for the past like three days to try to get Peter listed as out because he's my my goalie and he's just sitting in IR and I can't move him because he's not playing and they just don't care. I think that honestly they probably saw my tweets were like this dude won't leave us alone. He's he's kind of annoying. Let's just leave him as day to day. Which honestly I don't know. You know I'd probably do the exact same thing. Yeah, they, they have some like really uh, – they're really bad about putting the status of certain players up there. Like the other day, um, I had Varlamov in at goalie uh, against the Capitals, and I like to see – it was one to nothing late in the game. Like the Capitals just scored that one goal. I'm like, oh, man, I should be getting some pretty good points for this. Um, and I looked, and he, he, he didn't play. He was, he was a late scratch, but I checked the – I checked my lineup at like 6 o'clock. The game was at 7. It said he was still starting. That sucks. ESPN is, I don't know, man. They A lot of people say Yahoo is better. So, and then there's fan tracks too, um, as far as like the main three, I think. But fan tracks isn't as, I think ESPN is the most user friendly of the three. Um, and we have a lot of history in our league with ESPN. It would suck to move. We just got to hope they get their shit together, especially with this new deal in the league. Uh, so, hopefully, they that tr- trickles down to the, the fantasy budget. So, are some of the, the NHL games are going to start coming on TNT as well. I, I saw Turner was part of that. Mm-hmm. But then I read I – this was curious to me. I read that you could stream games on HBO Max. So I wonder if we'll be getting some F-bombs dropped on live stream. <laughs> I, I think it, I think it's a, it's a good thing, all these new deals with the NHL. Hopefully they capitalize on it like they have it in the past, but hopefully they do now. All of those TNT and ESPN guys that haven't paid attention to anything but football and basketball for the last 25 years are going to be struggling so hard. They're like, wait, what's it called? A puck? <laughs> I don't know about that. People are saying Shaq and uh, maybe Charles Barkley. 
could do it. I mean, we had Snoop Dogg and Wolf Wolf Ferrell. I was gonna say they gotta get Snoop back in there. Yeah, Vegas should should get more people. I think we could get Dua Lipa to do our games. I still don't think she cares, and she's British, so you know she really doesn't care. Trip is really he's really pushing hard for that. He's lobbying. He's lobbying hard, and he's doing his best. Bless Trip. Him goes on Twitter to get acknowledged by Dua Lipa and we get on Twitter to get acknowledged <laughs> by Trip Tracy. <laughs> We're just downstream a little bit. That's all. We'll get there. So once we get, once Trip gets Dua Lipa's attention and we get Trip's attention, we're basically friends with Dua Lipa. I think that's how that works. Yeah. Mutual friends. I mean, I shook <laughs> Rod Brindamore's hand in the, the lobby of the Cap Trust Tower one time. So I'd say we're pretty close. Salt of the earth. Yeah. I've run into to Rod a few times in North Hills. Those dudes are always like bouncing over there across the street to what is it, Fox and the Hound? And uh, I've run into Rod at like Moe's multiple times. I was just chilling, guy. having a burrito. I'm like, I would never go out in public if I were you. <laughs> Once, uh, when we were still in high school ages ago, uh, this is our senior year. Don't want to date ourselves here, but yeah, it, it was a while ago, way before he was the the head coach. Um, and I, I like it. It didn't strike me who it was. Like I, I like I held the door for someone. And I turned around. I was like, "Oh shit, that's Rod Brindamore. What's up, man?" <laughs> it's weird though. I've never seen anybody else. I only ever see Rod. For my twenty first birthday, hey, uh, my parents organized something to get the uh, like the jersey off the backs in the alumni game, and I I met him that way. And that was it. Was so awkward because you're just like. Hi, I, I feel like I'm not deserving of this, but nice to meet you. And they like bring you out on the ice and it's really awkward. And I'm usually like they give it to like kids and stuff. And I'm, I think I, I was 21. So <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what to say really. Like the, 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 the person next to me got Francis's, Francis Jersey, Francis's Jersey. Mincher just liked another one of our tweets. I don't know why that man doesn't follow us. We spit hot fire. So wait, so did the, the trip video that we, uh, we posted, was that, before the last episode or was it after that was the we the floor it was after because it was the florida um series and we ended our last podcast after tampa okay so we can talk about that <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you want to talk about our viral trip tweet i don't even know what to say about it other than i just was digging up old hurricanes content from the early 2000s and came across some old uh trip skits of like him Throwing water balloons at fake Panthers fans and like yelling into some horns on top of the stadium. And then he's like pretending to fake fall to his death. Yeah. Did you see uh, somebody replied to his, his reply to our tweet? And they're like, how many takes did that take? The ground looked really saturated and I didn't think about it, but I rewatched the video. <laughs> like, there's like <laughs> a huge puddle around where the cow is standing. So you could tell they, were, they had been chucking water balloons like all afternoon. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's always fun to to find those old nuggets of like Kane's history that people like all the new fans don't really know about and just letting it loose on the internet and getting getting it all of the acknowledgement and praise that it should have gotten. Seeing all the people saying it was cringy, it's like it's not cringy. That's our history. Someone was like really upset about the fact that um, We're the still Let's cringy. Go Kane's video was considered cringe, and they're like went on this long tirade and, on Reddit. They're like. It's not cringy. This is fun. You guys are, I don't know what's wrong with you. How can you say that's cringe? I'm like, okay, look, calm down. For starters, <laughs> it's cringy. Like, I barely made it through this video the first time. I've watched it about a million times since I found it or since Connor showed it to me. It still makes me cringe every single time. But <laughs> that's why it's so great. You can say it's cringy yeah. and, you, and, it, and it still can be good. You don't have to, like, go to war to defend John Forslund's mullet. No one has a problem with John Forslund's mullet. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it, it, that's part of your identity as a Canes fan is to embrace the cringe. Do you guys remember that like big controversy when the Hurricanes uh, they switched up the music that the Canes came out to? Like it wasn't Rocky like a Hurricane anymore. It was that like song that they had produced by some random band. It was someone that a band that made the song for it the was Hurricanes. Terrible, is what it was. It was awful. And that was the only song they they had. <laughs> they still I don't go know, back. To I kind of like liked it. <laughs> I better say I think that that song totally grew on me after a I think, while. Because if you if you go back and watch, we gotta find the video. We'll post. I have to post it on our social media. It's the. Uh, it, I think it's 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 set in the subway, and it might be black and white at some moments, but it's just it's very very dated. A music video of its time, and he's doing like the this the rock horns. Thing. 
Rock horns, hook horns. Rock horns. Yeah, and then he's he's I don't know, he's got the ripped jeans, he's got the tap out shirt, he's got the sunglasses in the subway, and he's just, you know, I can't I think it's called warning something, but I would listen to it. I think I would put I think I put it on my iPod or something. Yeah, I mean they still played Rocky like a hurricane, they just didn't do it every time, and then they eventually went back. I think they move it to the second period too. They might I think they moved Yeah, it. that I, sounds right. They bring it back for the playoffs. I mean, they don't even do they do they do it I, now? I'm like I literally go into every game last year, and I can't even remember if they still do it. They still do Rocky like a hurricane, right? Yeah, I remember um, because one of the like my favorite Canes memories was going to the first like one of the first playoff games in ten years, uh, and I, I think we might have all been there together for this game. But when they came out to Rocky like a hurricane, they were showing them in the like on the jumbotron coming out of the uh, coming down the hall. Like I just got chills. <laughs> that first playoff game at PNC against the Capitals was was just wild. It was just goosebumps the whole the whole opening. The towels. Oh god, it's so loud. And we're all up in the, like the upper levels because at that point we didn't realize we could get rush tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we I think we we moved down. <laughs> Connor's parents had oh they sit in what one fourteen is that what it is section one fourteen I don't know what section that is. I think it's one of four. So Connor's parents were like, Hey, uh, the guys that usually sit next to us aren't here. And we texted them and they said, they're not coming. So come down here after the first period and we'll, we'll give you our ticket stubs. And so we yeah. got, we, we weaseled our way down there. And so we watched, what, what was the score of that game? It was like five, was five, five to five, one yeah. or five zero. Yeah, they yeah. shut them out. It was five, nothing. So Connor and I watched the shutout game uh, from like right behind the glass. And <laughs> we, I yeah. have never screamed so loud in my life. I think we pissed off the people behind us because we just like, kept Kane's standing fans. up and yelling. And they were Canes fans, but I, it was a weird, it was a weird night. It was like a feast of famine or famine to feast moment because we were, oh, we could almost touch the wall of the back, of the section, the third level, and we were that high. And then after the Svetch fight, I think the next period we were able to move all the way down to like fifth row. And we were just I like, memory from that series wasn't even. Uh, we weren't even at the game. It was the game seven at the O house. That was fantastic. <laughs> oh yeah. We were just jumping around screaming. I don't know how long that it could have been 30 seconds. It might've been 15 minutes. I don't know, but we were so ecstatic. <laughs> well, yeah. folks, the good news is we, uh, it may not be a hundred percent capacity, but we're, uh, we're doing it again. I'm just happy that the hurricanes like three years in a row in the playoffs. It's unbelievable and really exciting and almost surreal. I don't really have a take here. I'm just really excited to watch <laughs> Hurricanes hockey. <laughs> so didn't didn't we get uh, we got a fan question this week? That I think would tie that. Do you want to do the fan questions now, or do you want to save those until the end? I mean, we're already talking about the playoffs. So we might as well bring up one of the questions. That's true. We do have fan questions this week for the first time ever. They're not the made up people that <laughs> Connor brings to us. <laughs> Kaniac Johnny wants to know who the more favorable matchup for round one is: Dallas or Nashville. That's an excellent question, Kayak Johnny. Thank you, Kayak Johnny. Do you want to chime in? We want Nashville if we had to choose for sure. I don't know what it is. I think it's just like a organizational thing. We just have good games against Nashville. So, yeah, <laughs> Nashville <laughs> for Dallas. It could but, be that Nashville is hot garbage, and that is why we play so well against them. And I don't want to see uh, Dallas. Is, I feel like Dallas is on the up and up. With uh, They still have Sagan out. They still have Bishop that might I think Bishop might be out for the season actually. I don't think he's coming back. I think if we get the if we get the one seed, we would prefer Nashville. It's it's unified for 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 Nashville. I don't want to play Dallas. I Dallas was the one team I was concerned about all season. And now that they're like getting healthy and kind of getting their crap together, I really have no desire to play them in the playoffs. Uh, I'm not necessarily afraid to play Dallas because I think we would handle Dallas. But Dallas has the tools uh, that you need to compete with the Hurricanes, and they can kind of bully us around a little bit. Um, and, I mean, we've talked about this. We're beating a dead horse to this point. The blueprint to beat the Canes is to kind of bully them around, knock them off the puck. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not scared of Dallas, but I don't want to play them. It doesn't matter because we can beat every single one of the teams in the division. So Did, Was that, was that all, his, all of his question? Was oh, he just, also um, wanted to know uh, bagels or biscuits. I'm not even going to give this one uh, much thought. It's just biscuits. 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 I still want to try one of those, like uh, the the UVAs or UVAs or whatever they're called. No, that looks gross, you? but so it's still a biscuit. Never... I'd rather eat a, a, a UVA uh, than a bagel. 
What is a UVA? It sounds like a, a score streak for a college. So there's this there's this reporter. I, guess, I think he's in Virginia. Um, he's like a sport, like a local sports cast or whatever. He he goes to Bojangles and he like he started taking pictures of his bowberry biscuits that he cut in half and he put the Cajun filet biscuit like the chicken in the bowberry, but it has pimento cheese on it. So it's like a oh. bowberry, bowberry <laughs> biscuit with pimento cheese and uh, you know Cajun filet. Dang, it's like yes. I don't know. That's just mixing. It's too many. Usually, I'm a fan of like mush and mixing things up, <laughs> but I don't know. That just doesn't sound like a sum equal to its parts. And let the record show that Connor is the type of person who will eat two day old instant mashed potatoes after they've sat in the fridge, and he will re re microwave them and consume them as the with no second thought. Bacteria. With no with yeah, the heat kills bacteria with no second <laughs> thought, and he wouldn't even eat the UVA. Yeah, you don't want to throw away food if you if you can just heat it up and kill the bacteria. Anyway, uh, we have oh, another no. question from Kaniac Andrew. Thanks for the question, Kaniac Andrew. With the injuries we are currently dealing with, who's the guy you believe we should be seeing more of? Go. Mm, I mean, the easy one is uh, the guy that's been flashing this week after we called him out. I mean, Geeky was getting kind of scratched every now and then when we had more of our forwards. Um, before, you know, they, they went on the shelf. But he's been playing out of his mind this last week. He, he's not seeing a ton of ice time, but he's really flashing. I don't know. I think I think as much flack as we gave Brendan Moore last season with – or his his unwillingness to put Svechnikov with Ajo and Turbo in, at some points, I think he's done a great job um, with juggling the lineups with these injuries going in and out. I think he's done a great job with defensive pairings. He's, he's you know, experimented a little bit in some games, but – I think overall he's done a great job. If I had to choose someone, I think Lorenz. Um, it was awesome to see him on the first line, and it's awesome to see him get more and more chances because I think he's just a great guy. I'm gonna. Y'all said positive things, so I'm gonna say something negative because that's me. I would like to see more from Spech. Um, I know he's been putting away some assists, and I know everyone's been harping on him for not scoring goals this year, but I don't think that's his problem. I think one of his greatest strengths is that he's a playmaker. Um, the last two seasons, he's been making unbelievable passes. Um, and he's not really been doing that. I feel like every time I turn on the game and I watch him make passes, he just seems he seems shook. Like his his nerves are just shot. He's just so stressed out and down on himself that he he's not even making good passes anymore. And you know we can't have that in the playoffs. We can't have bad penalties. We can't have bad passes. He's gonna have to to turn that side of his gameplay around, especially if he's not gonna score. Yeah, he's he's definitely playing with a little bit less confidence this year. I don't know what is like wrong with him. Maybe he just needs to like drop. He needs to dump his ex, his girlfriend, <laughs> <laughs> Dougie's sister. <laughs> Maybe yeah, he needs I, to just like he, you know, spend less time with her and more time with the boys. I don't know. With the, with the to me, it looks like he's he's like pressing a little bit, right? Like he he knows that. I mean, he, he's playing well. It's not like he's playing bad. He's just not producing like we expect him to. Um, and I think that he's just kind of pressing and trying to force the issue. And it's, it's really noticeable in overtime. He has really struggled in, in the extra time this season. Like we've lost probably like two or three games just on his mistake, like one mistake, you know, and gives the puck back quickly to the other team. Yeah. He always draws a bad, um, either a hooking or a slashing call in the third period when he's on the four check. I don't know what it is about him that he's just always slapping a stick at somebody's gloves. And, you know, you just can't do that. Tripp says it every game. He's like, you can't do that unnecessary penalty. But his, his penalties are, are a little bit of his downfall. And his his penalties before were always at the beginning of the game. Now they're, like, late in the game. So it's not so much he's taking more penalties. It's just the context with which he takes penalties. Oh, yeah, that's right. Like, it's just bad timing. Svechnikov and stick infractions. The tale as old as time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, we got we got one more. Oh, wow. Well, Kanak Jason kind of gave us three questions. Uh, the mm -hmm. first one, which is arguably the most important, is how many lows would a Rob Lowe rob if a Rob Lowe could rob lows? Seven. All right, next yeah. question. Seven <laughs> and one Home Depot. What are each of our favorite Canes players of all time? We should do um, a past and present, like one past and one present. I think Brendan Moore, for me, is a quintessential hurricane of the past that – you just kind of got to love and love, love him now. He could be a past and present, honestly. I think right now, though, I think I'm going to go with, um, I think, Jordan Stahl and Brendan Moore for me. Pace? 
Yeah, for me, uh, Connor totally stole my mind as well. It's it's definitely Rod Brindamore because um, it's it's Rod the Bod. He's a perfectionist, um, and that's just what I love the most about him. Like he's he he just expects so much out of everybody. Um, you you could do like some really good things, and he'll just gloss right over them and be like, "Yeah, but we still have this to work on." Um, and I really think that that helped us build a, this winning culture that we have now. My current player. Um, I'm going to go with who I think eventually will be the captain of the Hurricanes, and that's Jacob Slavin. I just, he's just, you know, so underrated nationally. Like he's a great player, but um, we see him on a, on a game to game basis, and he plays in a small market. So uh, people just don't, I don't think he's appreciated as much as he really should be. All right. Um, I guess I won't say Rod Brandamore, even though he's the obvious answer. Um, I'll give a little extra. Um, kudos to somebody else that deserves it. I don't know. There's just so many. I was like sitting here, like looking at the list and just like thinking. Oh. About, I like went back and I watched like old replays and I was like trying to get in the mindset. It's like don't forget about you know some of the greats. Don't forget about Pickin and and Wesley and Whitney and all these great guys. But oh, um, Pickin, he's yeah, the see, reason that the the icing rules there, right? And I was thinking about like um, died for that. <laughs> Uh, Jokinen, like there's so many good Kaniacs from, and you know, obviously Cam Ward's up there too. Scotty Walker. Um, Scotty Walker, yeah. But I think I'm going to narrow it down and say Justin Williams just because he's Mr. Game 7. He's a, he's easily like the stud of the Hurricanes franchise. You know what I mean? Like he won a cup here. He went to LA, won two cups there. And then he came back after a brief stint with the Capitals, but we don't have to talk about that. Um, and he came back and he pretty much helped us get back into the playoffs. Um, huge role with us beating the Capitals in the 2018, 2019 playoffs. It's just so much to love about Justin Williams. Um, and I'm super excited that he's going to be uh, working with like the coaching staff too in the future. Um, around. Yeah, I think because he left, he kind of gets overlooked. But I don't know. He's always been a, a Kaniac at heart. You know, even when he left, he was always, I feel like, in, on good terms with the franchise. He didn't leave in a, in a salty way. Yeah, not like a Skinner or not even like a Stall. Like a Stall kind of, a lot of the, the fan base has mixed feelings with, with Eric Stall and not, I mean, Justin Williams is a completely different story. So he, he lost on good terms. How happy do you think that uh, Rod Brandemar was to have? Justin Williams come in and play for him. Like Justin Williams came in and he knew what it took to win, but he also knew what it took to be a, like a hurricane Like and to what I think it was Brendan Moore that said this. Um, he wanted to make people feel proud to wear the, the hurricane sweater again. And Justin Williams said that, said that that was his goal when he came back. Like this just God, it just gets me so fired up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it was cool to have him come back too because it's kind of like he was Rod's second in command. He was like the the emissary to the team because he was Rod's old teammate. Um, and so he knew Rod better than everybody else. So that was cool. Um, yeah, there's just – there's too many good things to say about Justin Williams for us to put it in one podcast. So – and what's already been said has been said over and over and over by Trip Tracy, our Supreme leader. So um, shout out to Trip. We're totally forgetting uh, one of our most prominent followers. Who's that? Eric Cole. Oh yeah, Eric Cole, man. Our 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 VIP follower on Instagram. If you don't follow Eric Cole, go follow Eric Cole. Uh, Eric Cole yeah. follows us, therefore you should follow us as well. Um, oh yeah, but my my favorite Ooh, contemporary, yeah. my favorite contemporary Canes player. I'm gonna go with Nino, just because I feel like he's. I don't know, man. The guy puts up points all the time, and yet no one ever talks about him. the The conversation is stays purely on Aho, Svech, Natchez, and even like Trocheck nowadays. And so I feel like Nino is the most underrated uh, producer on the team. He's having a great year, and he's he's a lot bigger than you think too. Nino is. He's always getting into scraps. He's over like two hundred pounds. I think he's a. Uh... Uh, Chip Alexander's favorite player as well. As well, he so eloquently uh, calls him Nino Nita Rider. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking um, about when he called into that that Northern Radio show about yeah. the hockey a few years ago? Chip, they, your mic's off. They hung up on Chip. He was like calling to talk about Nino, and they're like, "I can't deal with this guy's accent." I've never been more pissed off at a, a Northern Radio station in my entire life. I think I kind of remember that. For those of you who don't know, Chip called in to a Boston radio station. I guess it was during the playoffs, right? Um, just to give his two cents on something Nino had done. And they 
like listened to him talk for five seconds and then hung up on him and we're like i can't listen to this guy like his accent like what where are you even from i don't even want to hear what you have to say you clearly don't know hockey and i'm like dude you're talking to an absolute saint sir chip alexander is no joke <laughs> it's some kind of like ist there not like sexist or like it's regionalist it's, like a, or it's regionalist. a regionalist regionalist yeah it's an ist he's isting us <laughs> Uh, last question we've got from Kaniac Jason. Do we think Dougie will stay with the Canes or go somewhere else? I think we have more information on Dougie, uh, how he's doing post-injury now than we did when we <clears throat> talked about this before. So this could be a, a little bit of a different conversation. Yeah, I think he was on a cold streak when we discussed this before, and now he's he's back to putting points on the board. I, I mean, we have to sign Dougie. He's, he's like the amount of points he brings to the table as a defenseman. The amount like of offense he brings, I, I know his he's basically a glorified winger on his on defense, but you you put him with Slavin, who's who's like the next coming of Trip Tracy, and you're fine back there. <laughs> you got Mrazek blocking shots. I mean, anything north of eight million would would be a little steep, and I think with the flat cap, it's I don't think it gets that. I don't think it's above that there's also talks of of um of the uh expansion draft not signing him until like keeping him ufa so you don't have to protect him and then ex- like protecting bean where you guys just takes yeah i'm glad you brought that up because that was going to be um what i was going to bounce off of your point was the expansion draft we were we weren't talking about that do you think that the hurricanes will have to offer dougie hamilton more if they were to do some kind of handshake agreement because in my assumption, I think we almost have to to be like, hey, we're going to not sign you until after the draft, but we're going to give you more money. Yeah, it, it's going to have to be a behind the behind the table deal for that to happen. I don't think he wants to go. And I think that's probably one of the most important aspects to this whole will they or won't they sign or resign Dougie. He had a lot of issues trying to, you know, like fit in at, in Boston and with other teams. And so. I think he likes the culture in Carolina. I think he likes the teammates. Um, there's no way he doesn't like playing for Rod Brindamore. So I think he's trying to play hardball enough to get the money he wants, but it, in the end, he'll end up taking what we offer him. I'd be very surprised if he looked at us and was like, no, that's not enough. I'm leaving. I hope not. Yeah. We don't have anyone to replace him on the right side. Like we don't have anything to replace what he brings offensively to the Hurricanes. And we need goals, especially now. And like the way that the league is moving, we need to score more consistently so I can keep up with the curve. Um, trying to sign Svetch couldn't have come at a better time since he's on a, a dry spell. Um, but he's probably the one player that I actually lose sleep over wanting to leave the Canes. Svetch? Like I could, I could see his ego getting ahead of him and him leaving to go somewhere else. He has a chance to win a championship with this team, though. Multiple. I mean – obviously if everyone stays healthy, but they have a good chance to, you know, be competitive for a long time if he were to stay. Now what do you guys want to talk about? We've covered all the questions. We covered the playoffs. What type of gum do you think Rod Brindamore should choose? Oh man. Big red. It's gotta be something that can take, take a pounding. <laughs> oh, God. I think Rod's got like this little secret gum and it's just creatine gum. And you just sit there and choose it behind the bench all day. You choose it like like someone that's addicted to cigarettes and is, just has the nicotine gum and just is like gnashing it constantly and just trying to get that last ounce out of it. I, I did have something to mention. Um, Eric Stahl, his uh, five on five, went, as soon as he got to Montreal, one goal on and eight goals against, and they're five and eight since the trade. I don't know. And then they left Buffalo, and Buffalo has been great. So... Is Eric Stahl a locker room cancer? <laughs> Isn't that what they called Dougie when he was in Boston? <laughs> he wouldn't go to museums. No, he wouldn't get drinks with the boys. Or he would, yeah, he yeah, would Dougie, go to, Dougie didn't like to pound brews with the boys. He would just go to the, he would go to the museum. That's what it was. Yeah. In Boston? I mean, there's some great museums in Boston. Yeah. That's that's my fear. Maybe he's just like jumping team to team. Just to get the museum train going. <laughs> yeah. And he spends enough time next to the next team that could be it we need to build more museums <laughs> <laughs> more museums for raleigh to keep dougie around take two of those two of the eight million dollars and put it towards a an aviation museum and dougie will stay 
<laughs> yeah, I, got a, I got another topic I thought about because I keep seeing the NFL keeps talking about how players are converting their entire salaries to Bitcoin. And I keep tweeting at Trocheck asking him when he's going to do it because uh, I don't know what game it was, but Trip called uh, Trocheck Mr. Bitcoin because his numbers keep going up. And I'm like, well, that's perfect. Trip set it up. You just need to knock it home. And uh, he doesn't respond to my tweets. I told him I'd help. I'll assist. Doesn't he know we're almost mutual friends with Dua Lipe through Trip Tracy? <laughs> Dua Lipe sounds like a matador. Dua Lipa? <laughs> Is it Dua Lipa? Lipa? Yeah. Uh, I'll never get it right. I think it could be. It could be big news if someone in the NHL converted their salary to Bitcoin. And those guys don't make nearly as much money as as NFL players. I feel like they should be more incentivized to do it. The like an NFL player convert like he converted his, his uh, salary to Bitcoin. Yeah, Russell Okun was the first, and it was like uh, it was his signing bonus or something. Yeah, last payment with it with the Panthers it was like eight point five million dollars in Bitcoin, and then it it, sh- it shot up the uh, like two or three weeks later, so it was worth significantly more. Um, one of our followers, Michael Lee, who's got his um, he's the host of Blue Line Banter podcast, but he's also, I guess he's the the it's his company, Gondola Capital. Um, he's a big Bitcoin guy. Um, follows the podcast and i bet he would be more than happy to help out old Vinny trocheck as well i think it would be it would be a big deal for the nhl and for the players if someone pulled the trigger on converting their salary to bitcoin how many bowberry biscuits can you get with one bitcoin the limit does not exist <laughs> how many uvas can you get with one bitcoin is it uva <laughs> The price of the price of Bitcoin is currently at this time of recording fifty four thousand eight hundred and six dollars. So you could get about fifty four thousand eight hundred and six Bowberry biscuits with a single Bitcoin. <laughs> Thank you. Like a dollar, a dollar a piece, aren't they? To be a millionaire, well, unless we score a power play, in which case you can get one more. Yeah, the the number is infinite if we get more power play goals. We're <laughs> we're we're huge Bitcoiners here at the uh, Redneck Hockey Podcast. Um, one of us by choice, the other two by force. <laughs> good old boys we like drinking beer and bitcoin <laughs> in the river so do y'all want to talk about the upcoming schedule yeah so we're done with the uh with playing dallas we're done with playing tampa we're done with playing florida so it's a nice feeling knowing that we get to coast these last few weeks you know what mm-hmm. i mean like it's not it's important for us to win because i would really like to get the first seed but it's also a really nice feeling not having to to squeeze in at the last second the way we have in previous years president's trophy baby yeah rod even said um something about the injured players this past week he was like yeah we don't have to push them to play like we're in a very favorable uh spot where we can get some some other guys some reps um but to me i mean we we were down a couple players against against dallas and obviously we got turbo back but um, they were down a couple of players against them and they needed that game to, you know, move up in the playoff hunt. And we just took it to them in the second game against Dallas. You remember how stressful it used to be to just have to constantly doing, you had to do like statistics to track the hurricanes playoff, like chances every season. And now we're, we have like weeks of just, yeah, we're going to, we're in the playoffs already. It's kind of great just to, I don't know what to do. I feel like I still have to worry as a Hurricanes fan. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't really feel like we're like... in, even though we're already in. Yeah. But the only thing that, that stresses me out with this like coasting um, spot we found ourselves in is I don't. I mean, I know I know I don't have to tell this to Rod because Rod's smart enough to know know this already. But I don't want players to get overrested. You know what I mean? It's the same way as like when you shut out a team in the playoffs and you've got that awkward period of time where you're waiting for the other teams, you know, in the other conference to to play their last couple of games and you just sit around and you wait and it never pays off for anybody. So like if Peter, like Peter needs to come back and play a few games before the playoffs, um, you know, maybe even keep Reimer fresh as well. Um, it would be nice if a lot of those guys who have been hurt, come back and play a few games before the playoffs start. So should we do our weekly segment now? Yeah. What's our weekly segment? Did Jeff Skinner score? Unfortunately he did. He got a goal on two nights two nights ago two games ago two games ago jeff skinner scored a goal ruining our joke go jeff oh buffalo buffalo you know one stall left i'm just saying Locker eric was too good there. for buffalo <laughs> i think it was the coach too but i i think 
<clears throat> yeah, he's really happy to get out of there, Taylor Hall. And you feel bad for the guys that got traded to Buffalo. Yeah, I mean, they're still getting paid to play hockey. I think that's the next step up, though. Like, not getting paid to play hockey and then play <laughs> 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 Yeah. Then maybe Ottawa or Detroit. But at at least. this point, getting sent to Buffalo or Philadelphia is like getting sent back down to the minors. I saw that uh, Philadelphia has actually more goals against than Buffalo right now. That's because they played the Rangers a bunch of times, and yeah, um, every time they did, Zabinajad pulled out a hat trick. I like Philadelphia, so I'm I'm not going to trash Philadelphia too much. Um, yeah. But I wish their hockey team would turn something around. But it says a lot about the um, the Eastern Division. I mean, it's like which team can beat up New Jersey, Philadelphia, and um, Buffalo oh, the most yeah. times, and that's like that's who gets to be in the playoffs. It's like you pretty much are guaranteed to make the playoffs if you're not New Jersey. Yeah, it's 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 definitely the tightest division. Uh, you look at all the probabilities of the other divisions, and it's all the top three teams just coasting at the top. And then whoever is fourth is just going to get slapped by the number one team. But, Western division is always really weird. I always watch them play during the season, and I'm like, man, those teams are not – like they're not capable of competing with the Central Division and the Eastern Division. And then every time we start playing them, they like really show up. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's going to come down to goaltending and a lot of different things and people not playing each other for the first, until like the first time this year. Uh, it's going to be I, a culture shock for a lot of them. I really like what Ned said though, where he said like it's believing. Ned is the Neo of the Carolina Hurricanes. <laughs> yeah. Like every time he gets up and blocks a puck, they're like, what's happening? He Morpheus is somewhere in the background. <laughs> He's beginning to believe. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best goalie in the NHL. Because he believes he is. I love Ned. Uh, every time I hear him and or Trip talk about how he's like, um, Ned thinks or Ned says that he can beat any team in this league, and he means it. And I'm like, man, hell yeah, he does, because it's that attitude that's going to make him a great goalie. Yeah, he's like Carter Hart, who can't. He's the highly touted prospect, and he's just having a terrible year because he just he's his confidence is just like zero. But you have Ned, who's just looking the skater in the eye with those, those crazy <laughs> eyes. And that wild mane, just belief. I mean, y'all seen the photo of him spraying his hair with with the water bottle? You know, it's in that water bottle, right? It's holy water. <laughs> that man does. don't just... play around. There's no demons in that man's head. It's all gold, baby. That's what happens every week and every week. Ned impresses us more and more. He sprays it around the crease too, just so the pucks don't. It's like a barrier. I think when the season, when uh, when Ned finally retires, he'll probably become an exorcist. <laughs> how about the uh, the hug the hug tradition between um slavin and trocek it's guy love between two guys oh, you gotta love it it's the cringiness you gotta you have, to, you have to love the cringiness of the hurricane i don't know if that's necessarily cringy is it's just good wholesome content yeah i mean it's like it's, it kind of goes along with it i think for me it's just especially like this the storm the storm surge and like People make fun, making fun of it. You just have to take it all in stride. And like, I sure. appreciate, I appreciate our cheesiness. You know, mm-hmm. I, yeah. it's some some people hate it, and they're like, they're like I, the skull claps lame, the hugs lame, the little videos they put on the jumbotron between games are lame. I'm like, no, man, that's just like part of the community. It's part of the fun. It's cheesy because it's, I mean, it's just cheesy content, but it's like it's our content, and you just have to roll with it, and own up to it. Yeah, like, what yes. would you prefer than just look at the camera and be like, yes, 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 and then go to the locker room? And not like it's just extra stuff that you don't have to watch if you don't like it. I don't remember who who she asked, but did you guys see uh, Sarah Simeon's interview with uh, one of the players? They're like, "Yeah, what do you what do you guys do when you trade for someone? Like, do you tell them what to do for the storm surge?" And he was just like, "No, we just throw them out there." (laughs) (laughs) It's so much fun watching their face. I don't remember who was talking about uh, was talking about Hawk and Pod doing the storm surge, and they're like. Look how excited he is. I'm like, dude, he is so uncomfortable. You were insane. He is so uncomfortable. He has no idea what's going on. He's like, this is the goofiest thing I've ever done in my entire life. I mean, he's going to love it. They all love it. But he definitely is sitting there like he's cheesing ear to ear because he's so uncomfortable. He doesn't know what to do. He's like, he probably made fun of it when he was with other teams. He's like, damn, now I have to do it. <laughs> Does anyone have anything else to say? Anything funny you want to add? Watch out for blondes. They can be, <laughs> they can be very dangerous. <laughs>